alpha. Okay, so um, let me give an example. Here, it kind of looks like this picture. This is going to play the role of minus alpha. Why? If I look at um, this point, minus p is over here. And if I subtract a little, uh, I, I'm still in alpha. So this is not in minus alpha. On the other hand, this point will be in minus alpha because if I look at its negative, here's p, here's minus p, I can subtract a little bit and it's still not in alpha. Okay, okay but this is uh, the creature that does uh, the thing that you would want. All right, that's addition. Let me uh, close with multiplication. And, uh, and finish with uh, what the least upper bound is going to be. So I'm going to erase this here because it's convenient. So multiplication, uh, I'll just make a few comments because it's kind of what you might expect. If addition is the sum of two things, one from one cut and one from the other, and you look at all such things, what do you think multiplication ought to be? Maybe the product of lots of, of, of things, one from one from the other? Only problem with that is that if you have some negatives, you run into problems, right? Negative numbers. OK, so the definition for multiplication, uh, you just have to be careful for, uh, for, uh, about minuses. So I'm just going to say this. Um, um, just be careful of uh, negative rationals, you know, when they multiply. So the definition looks something like this. I'm just going to define, first define it for the positive uh, rationals. So define uh, if alpha and beta are in the positive uh, reals, sorry, the ones that are bigger than zero, alpha bigger than zero star. These are, I mean, these are alpha and beta are bigger than zero star. Uh, then uh, alpha beta is defined to be the set of all little p such that instead of saying p is equal to some product, we'll say p is less than rs for some r in alpha, s in beta and rs bigger than zero. So here we're just being careful about using only positive uh, rationals. Okay. And uh, we'll let one star be all the rationals that are strictly less than one. That's the multiplicative identity. And then I'll let you look at the book to see what you do for negative numbers for negative reals. Um, basically, you, you, you make them positive, you multiply, and then negate as needed. Um, uh, C book. And the claim is, and you can check all these things, but we won't do it, it's just tedious, uh, is that this satisfies the multiplication axioms as well. OK, and so now, just to finish, let me just then say, do, does this have suprema? Does this creature that we've just defined have suprema? How would you take the supremum of a bunch of cuts? And I'll give you a hint here. Look at this cut. Look at this cut. Oh, I have a whole collection of cuts. What's the cut that's going to be like right that, 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 that does a thing that's, that, could, that contains them all because it's bigger, but it's the smallest thing that contains them all? What's, what's the thing you might do? Here's a, here's, a, here's, a, here's a bunch of cuts. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, and it's all these points here. Take their what? Take their unions. Beautiful definition of, of, uh, of uh, 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 it's a beautiful um, description of what the supremum ought to be. So um, given, uh, a bunch of cuts. So if alpha is an A, sorry, so given A, 
a set of cuts, a set of cuts A, let's let gamma be the union of all the alpha where alpha is in A. And the claim is, this is what I'll finish with, gamma is going, is, is going to be the supremum of A. And it's a cut. Gamma is a cut, and gamma is the supremum of A. Uh, it's, it, it, it should be very clear why it's an upper bound, because it contains everything else. And uh, we'll have to see why it's a least upper bound. And once we do that, we'll have very easily shown that R has this property that Q does not have. Okay? It's complete. Has all its holes filled in. Okay? We'll say a little bit more about this next.